Every day, more New Yorkers are going solar to save money on their electric bills and support renewable energy. There are many policies that have driven the growth of solar in New York. Net metering plays a critical role in the continued growth of solar and making it economically viable to install. In this video, you will learn what net metering is, how it works, and how your electric bill will be affected after installing a solar system connected to the electric grid. The policies in this video apply to the commercial electric customers of these seven utilities. Net metering is a billing service provided by electric utilities. Utility customers who generate their own electricity from solar or other types of renewable energy systems are able to send the electricity their home or building is not using to the grid in exchange for credits on their bill. Let's see how this works for a solar system. During the day, a solar PV system produces electricity for immediate use on the building. If there is any extra electricity not being consumed at the site, it is sent to the electric grid for use by your local utility. In return for the electricity that is sent onto the grid, the utility provides the customer with credits. When the solar system is not producing all the electricity the customer needs, for example at night, the utility still provides that needed power. Typically, the customer is charged for consuming that energy but with net metering, any credits earned by a PV system will offset usage at other times. The hardware that allows the utility to keep track of your credits is called a net meter. It's a digital electric meter that is programmed to calculate the sum or net of energy delivered to your building. You won't actually see a dial on the meter spinning forwards and backwards because it's all digital. What you will see is an arrow pointing left or right to indicate if electricity is being sent to the grid or from it. When the arrow is moving left, excess solar electricity is being exported to the grid. When the arrow is to the right, the utility is sending you electricity. Your solar contractor will submit a net metering application for you once you decide to go solar. The utility will install the net meter on your building's electric panel when your application is approved. It really comes down to how much energy the building uses compared to how much energy the solar system produces. If the solar system is producing more energy than you are consuming, like a low energy using storage facility on the left, excess electricity will be sent onto the grid. The utility will provide you with a credit for that energy. However, if your building is using more electricity than your solar system can produce at that moment, like a high energy using laundry mat on the right, you will be purchasing that additional electricity from the utility. You can think of it as a savings account. You won't be notified by the utility of credits and charges until your next electric bill. Net metering works on a daily basis to measure the amount of electricity being sent to and from the utility grid. It also allows any remaining credits at the end of your monthly billing cycle to be used at other times of the year. Some utilities provide monthly bills while others are bi-monthly. To see how credits work on a monthly basis, let's look at two different offices with the same usage. Sunny's office installed a solar system that is large enough to produce 100% of their annual electricity needs. Sunny's office may see credits on their spring and fall bills that can offset the winter and summer usage. If this is the case, the utility will roll over credits on their bills until they need to use them. Please be aware that not everyone installs a solar system to produce 100% of all the building's electricity needs. Sometimes the roof size, financial payback, or other factors may limit how large of a solar array can be installed. Cher's office could have the exact same electricity usage as Sunny's office, but they installed a solar system that is only large enough to produce 50% of their electricity needs. Their electricity consumption and solar production may look like this next chart. Cher's office will see a reduced electricity bill from the solar production, but will not have excess credits to roll over to the next bill like Sunny's office did with a larger solar system. 
Typically, your electric bill looks similar to this example for customers who do not receive demand charges. It shows this month's meter reading minus last month's reading to calculate your usage for the billing cycle. It also shows customer service, delivery, and supply charges. The bill will now have a net metering summary. For this customer, they do not have any credits from prior months and they used 50 kilowatt hours even with the solar system. They may have used much more than 50 kilowatt hours throughout the month that was offset by the solar system. 50 is the remaining balance at the end of the billing cycle. As you saw before going solar, you will receive charges for the number of kilowatt hours used. Prices vary between utilities and rate classifications. You can check your rates on your current electric bill to get actual costs. If at the end of the month you still have excess credits, you will get a utility bill that looks like this. The credit will be shown with a negative sign. For customers not subject to demand charges, only your basic customer service charges need to be paid this month for using the utility grid and their billing services. The customer service charge cannot be reduced with solar because the utility is still providing services for using the electric grid at night and at other times when the solar system is not providing all of your energy needs. The price of your customer service charge varies depending on your rate and utility. These credits can roll over until the next bill when you need them. Your next bill's kilowatt hour usage will be offset equally at a one-to-one -one full retail value meaning for every kilowatt hour credit earned, you can offset one kilowatt hour of usage. After a year, if you still have extra credits, the credits will continue rolling over to the next year with the exception of the PSENG Long Island Territory, where their customers can receive a refund check at the avoided cost of power rate. In this example, the customer had 20 credits left over from the previous bill and now added another 30 credits this month for a total of 50 credits to roll over to the next bill. Many large commercial customers receive what is known as demand charges based on the maximum amount of energy they have used at one point in time. The gray area in this graph represents this building's consumption throughout the day. The demand is measured every day for the entire monthly or bi-monthly billing cycle in order to determine the demand charge calculation. The most amount of energy used at one point in time in the day in this example was at 2 p.m. This customer's demand charge will likely be based on the maximum energy supplied over 15 or 30 minutes in one single day throughout the entire billing cycle. Some utilities measure the demand based on 15-minute intervals and others use 30-minute intervals. You can research your utility's electric tariff to find out more details on calculating demand. A building's peak demand will likely not be reduced with solar. This is because every day of the entire billing cycle would need to be ideal weather and shade conditions on the solar array to ensure demand will not spike on one particular 15 or 30 minute time period throughout the entire billing cycle. This chart shows the energy production of an actual solar array in New York for each day of December. You can see rain, cloud, and snow likely played a big role in varying the daily output. Another situation that would cause peak demand not to be reduced with solar is when a building's highest demand is at night when the solar system is not producing electricity. For example, a manufacturing facility that operates at night. There are also other rules to calculating demand like minimum billing charges based on a percentage of the highest demand used in the last 12 months that make variable solar output difficult to reduce peak demand. There are other ways to reduce your peak demand like energy storage batteries for load shifting or cycling your equipment, but solar alone should not be relied upon. Even though solar doesn't usually help with reducing your peak demand calculation, the demand charges can be reduced on your electric bill if you have kilowatt hour credits remaining at the end of a billing cycle. 
This policy does not apply to the PSE&G Long Island customers. In this example, the commercial customer receives a 100 kilowatt hour credit for producing more solar than the building used throughout the month. 12 kilowatts was the highest recorded demand in a 15 or 30 minute period. The kilowatt hour charges are zero, but the demand charge is $200. The excess kilowatt hour credits will be converted to a monetary value to offset the rest of the bill. The calculation for doing this comes by adding up the delivery and supply price per kilowatt hour rates and multiplying it by the number of excess credits. So in our example, it will be 14.5 cents multiplied by 100 kilowatt hour credits to equal $14.50. $14.50 is subtracted from the amount due. Again, the price per kilowatt hour rates vary greatly between different tariffs and utilities. 14.5 cents is used to show the calculation, but please refer to your electric bill to determine your rates. If there happens to be remaining money from the credits and the bill is zero, the remaining monetary value will be converted back to kilowatt hours at the same rate and applied to the next bill. For PSE&G Long Island customers, this formula does not apply and demand charges are not reduced. Any excess kilowatt hour credits will roll over to the next month until they are used or until the yearly time period when PSE&G Long Island will issue a refund check. A different type of net metering is remote net metering, which allows net metering credits produced by one solar system to be allocated to multiple utility accounts even if the solar system is at another location. So instead of rolling over credits from your net metering bill, you can offset your other electric bills in that same billing cycle. In this example, a commercial business's headquarters office in Ithaca installed a large solar system that can produce more energy than that building needs. This is considered the host account because the solar system is electrically connected to it. The business owner wishes to offset the company's other electric bills in their three branch offices. These are considered the satellite accounts. To qualify for remote net metering, all the utility accounts must be under the same name, in the same utility, and the same NYISO load zone. The customer must own or lease all of the properties. The host account cannot be on a residential utility rate. It is only for farms and non-residential accounts. Satellite accounts can be residential. Satellite accounts cannot already be net metered accounts. A couple of other examples of how this could work are, a local government may choose to build a solar array on their landfill. Since there isn't much on-site load at a closed landfill, through remote net metering, the local government can use the electricity generated at the landfill location to offset energy consumption on a library or police station. The building doesn't necessarily need to be on another property. Sometimes one building may have two electric meters on it. The solar system can connect electrically to one meter and remote net meter the credits to the other meter. As recently mentioned, to qualify for remote net metering, all sites must be in the same New York Independent System Operator Zone, known commonly as NYISO. The load zones are shown here in this map. Let's go over some more rules you should be aware of before considering remote net metering. Solar will offset the host accounts bill first, and any excess generation can offset the satellite accounts bills. If the host account is not on a demand rate, credits will offset the satellite account's bills through kilowatt hour credits. All accounts will still have to pay the basic customer service charge. If the host account is on a demand rate, any excess kilowatt hour credits are converted to a dollar amount and reduces the host account's entire bill first, including demand charges and the customer service charge. Then, any remaining dollar value reduces the satellite account's bills. If there is still money left over after all host and satellite account bills are reduced to zero, then the dollar value is converted back to kilowatt hours and rolls over to the next bill.
If you would like to remote NetMeter, you along with your contractor can select the host and satellite accounts on a remote net metering application. You will also have the ability to select what percentage of your credits should be allocated to your satellite accounts. It does not have to be equal. This application will be submitted by your contractor to the utility during the installation process. Sustainable CUNY of the City University of New York and the New York State Electric Utilities hope this video has helped explain how solar net metering works. For residential electric consumers, please watch the residential net metering video to find out how solar works on your home. For more information on net metering, there are frequently asked questions on Sustainable CUNY's website. Your utility's customer service department can help answer specific questions for your rate classification. For more information on going solar, the New York Sun Initiative website has a list of contractors in your county. Both of these websites also has information on available incentives and estimated costs of going solar in New York.